Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. Again, we tell you that the name of Magnetic Service is a metaphor. For the magnetic grid of this planet contains that which is what we would call the posturing of consciousness. We've told you before that you could not live here without it. The fact that it had to change in the early days to reposture itself and get ready for what's coming. That's the service. That I originally have come for and now I am a messenger. People have said, well, where do you really come from, Cryon? I told you this morning that I am not an entity, not singular. I'm from the creative source just like you are. I represent pure consciousness of love and compassion. And I speak through this human being who you see sitting in the chair. It is not unusual, it's not odd, it's not spooky, it's filled with compassion, love, beauty. You see this as so odd and so strange and it's not. Thirty, thirty something years after the death of the one you call Jesus, there was an apostle. Saul of Tarsus is in prison. Now his name is Paul and he's writing what will someday become the Holy Scriptures. And he's sitting there by himself. And the man is filled with joy and he has tears running down his cheeks. And in a half light, he is inscribing the words that so many millions will read someday. And they will call it the word of God is not the word, it's word of Paul. Under the influence of channeling, directly he is receiving information about the beauty of God. What has happened on the earth? The master of love, word after word, thousands of them in prison. And he is so alive with it. He's channeling. And you don't have any trouble with that, do you? But when a modern man sits in a chair and does even a fraction of this to give you updated messages from the creative source, there are so many who say, impossible. This is your discernment. There is no judgment of your belief. But I ask you to discern, at least discern. I ask this of all those who would listen to me right now. Are you going to use what you think is real as the litmus test, as the measuring stick? Or are you going to discern the energy of what you're hearing right now? Are you going to listen to these words and understand and hear and feel the compassion and the love for you? Or have you already got your mind made up that it isn't happening? This channel today is going to be an answer to a question that was asked. It may not be exactly the question or exactly the answer, but it's close enough. For one of the driving questions that every old soul or light worker would have on this planet right now, one who is awakening to an energy that is so different right now, one who is aware that things are changing spiritually, physically, right now. That person would ask this kind of question. Dear Cryon, dear Spirit, dear God, in this new changing energy, what is it that a regular 
human being on this planet who is an old soul, what is it we can do that will not only enhance this energy, help ourselves, but also be commensurate to what is going to happen? What can we do? What is it, if you want to use the word, we should be doing? And we've told you before, there are no shoulds. So you reinterpret that and say, what is the most honorable thing that we can do to match the energy? And so I'm going to tell you, now dear ones, I've told you before, but every single time the question is asked, a more evolved answer will occur. <laughs> For as your linear time goes by, the potentials change. Therefore, you're sitting in a reality you have never experienced yet. This is new. It may feel like it was yesterday and the day before, but I know better. The potentials have changed. The kind of shift you expected may not arrive. Something better may arrive. You may have altered that. It is always dynamic. There is no set amount of energy being delivered to you on a certain schedule, dear ones, because your consciousness changes it every hour all the time. It's beautiful. I can give you these things that I'm going to give you now again because there has been precedent set on other worlds just like yours and some of you have been through it already and here it is again and I know what they've gone through. I have seen this. This is not the first time. You sit on the cusp of major human shift on this planet. What can you do to marry with the energy? I'm going to give you five concepts, and they're not easy. It's not a list for you to accomplish, dear ones. We don't give lists, it's concepts. And the very first one, I will say, is primary. And that is to say, not more important, but first. There's a difference. Not more important, but first. There's a difference. And we're going to use a word that probably doesn't even exist in your dictionary. Cognizing. Cognization is an English word that loosely means the cementing of belief. You believe there is gravity because you've seen it since you were born. It's invisible. But you believe in it so strongly that everything you do is so that you can work with it. <clears throat> you have cognized gravity it is not something that you believe in like you would believe in the tooth fairy for instance <laughs> for a while or when you're young no it is cognized and it becomes part of you to your last breath you believe in gravity you know it's there even though you can't see it it holds you to the earth, it never changes. We're going to ask you to cognize the belief that the energy that you are moving into is vastly different than the energy you have come from. This is first, it is primary. You have got to cement this into your belief system so strongly that everything you do from now on recognizes 
The new energy is the new normal. It's never going backwards. It's part of a new plan. It's almost like you died and came back with new gravity. Like suddenly the gravity was lessened and you can do more things and it's forever. And so you cognize this. Dear ones, it has to be first of the five. Because you won't be able to do anything else unless you believe that this shift has, has happened and it's real. The shift is dynamic. It continues to change. But like you turn a page and you're reading new words in a new novel, the page stays turned. You don't go back and read what happened before it. The page got glued to all the others before it and you can't get back to it. You are now past the page turn experiencing the new energy and that is the new gravity and you cognize it. Believe that it's happening. Now I keep saying this because there are those who aren't getting it. Because there's always that part of you that says, well, maybe it's not happening. <laughs> You've got to get past this one. Every waking moment is the new energy. And you're part of this. And that is why you were born at this time, dear one, old soul. Are you listening to me in the chair and all the places perhaps not in this room you wonder why you were born now you want to know why things are happening to you that need to happen to you now maybe it's so you believe there are some negative things in your mind that may be happening right now to you and you're wondering why me Let me say something gentle to you. You're so stubborn <laughs> that you're going to have to do something for yourself to realize that this is new. And when you do what you need to do for yourself and get past this hurdle, you'll realize there isn't anything you can't do. This is the way God works with humans. That's how much we love you. You know who I'm talking to? Get on with it, will you? Cognize this. That's number one. Number two is allowance of change. These are concepts. Oh, stubborn human being, get used to it. Things are changing, and they're going to change perhaps not in the direction you had planned. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Oh, singular human being with a singular purpose and a singular idea of who you are and what you should do. Get used to this. Allowance. Can you sit there and say this or something better? I allow growth. I allow consciousness change in me that may change my life in ways I never ever thought they would change how afraid of, of this are you the fear is about change it's not about where it's going it's just about the word itself change so the second in this 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 five set is allowance of change. Now look at the numerology of these things. Number one is always new beginnings. That's easy. You got to believe. Number two often deals with duality. And duality really is the primary fear of change. You just don't want this thing to move off that center point that you're used to, do you? Between light and dark. The duality that you've been used to, that balance between light and dark, 
is comfortable. Now suddenly, spirit wants to push it a little so that you capture a little more light so that the darkness starts to diminish in your life and it's going to change everything. Do you allow it or not? Belief. Allowance. Allowance of change. From the other side of the veil we look at you and we say everything that you're going through is like breaking old habits. They're just habits, that's all they are. You're like someone who has superpowers, you can fly. This is a metaphor. And you walk on the earth knowing that everything before said you couldn't fly. and we're saying you can but most of you won't it's just too comfortable to walk around <laughs> the metaphor is clear allowance of change so the next three are more practical but very difficult with your belief intact with that which is your allowance for things to change your conquering of duality you're now ready for one of the biggest steps number three compassionate action everything you do you do from a standpoint of compassion You're going down the road and you're in your vehicle and somebody cuts you off and honks at you and they're an idiot and they're a fool. <laughs> How do you feel? Is it possible to take that scenario to a compassionate level? And the answer is yes. First of all, don't let it affect you. Because you're a compassionate person, the buttons of anger, frustration are disconnected to the point that all you can think about is that that person is having a bad day. So you back your speed off so that they have an allowance. You give them more space so that they'll feel better. There's no grudge you hold. You don't yell at them back. You have a compassionate action in everything you do. Things happen to you with other individuals that might have normally hurt your feelings because your life is unique and there are things that will hurt you perhaps in what people say or how they act or what they do or don't do or the disappointments that you would have with others around you. This is simply human. Well, what if, what if everything you do, everything you do comes from a compassionate soul who sees it all so differently? Dear ones, in a compassionate way, there is no one who can hurt your feelings ever because you know who you are and they're just having a bad day. Do you see what I'm saying? Compassionate action is coming from a compassionate heart no matter what. It is a position of strength. Now some of you listening to this in other lands right now need to hear this. It is not a weakness to be compassionate. The masters of this planet exuded compassion. The very ones that you may worship are about compassion. They were not weak. So whatever you've been told about a kind, compassionate person, you're going to have to rearrange your perception because that is strength. Compassion is strength. A balanced human being will not catch disease. Did you know that? A balanced human being will have that which you would call synchronicity. Others call it luck. Synchronicity. To be in the right 
place at the right time to have the right things happen because they're compassionate. It's a beautiful package. When you start a compassionate action path, everything changes. That was number three. Now three in numerology, of course, is the catalyst. And what a catalyst is often known for in chemistry is that when it appears, it changes something else around it, while it itself often remains the same. A compassionate person changes those around him and her. And they don't rub off on you. No negativity will attach to you. It's such a position of strength, they will want to be with you. You change the earth where you walk. Number four. Spiritual sight. <laughs> I want you to start seeing the grander picture. I want you to see God in everything. I want you to look outside and see God in the trees and in the dirt. And the light that comes from the sun, I want you to feel the warmth of the love of God shining on you even in the dark. Spiritual sight is something that many have anyway. They're so aware so aware that God is in all things. But it's part of this circle that we're describing of the five things we want you to, to know you can do. Compassion is one thing, but spiritual sight, this actually proves that compassion works because you can see God in other people. The one who cuts you off on the road has God inside, just doesn't know it, just doesn't know it. And your spiritual sight, married to your compassion, says, there goes a creature just like me who doesn't know about themselves yet. Not yet. Not yet. The compassionate soul, which was number three, who has spiritual sight, is the one who can see God in everyone. It helps become compassionate, doesn't it? When somebody yells in your face, and what you see in their face is God. Can you do that? You've got to think differently. You might even have to be like the masters. And this is what they had. Dear ones, these things I'm giving you are true and accurate representation of the new human being. You're not going to be fully 100% successful in any of these unless you practice them. Number one was to cognize that which has changed. When you cognize something, it doesn't happen instantly. You're going to have to work on it. The belief has to be cemented gradually as you see the evidence of it and eventually it cognizes itself. You are actually training yourself to cognize and believe. The allowance for change, you have to train yourself to accept things that might be different. You're working on it all the time. The compassion comes slowly, not all at once. Don't feel you failed because you get frustrated or even angry. It's just a reminder that you weren't compassionate yet. <laughs> and spiritual sight, it comes with time, dear ones. It comes with time. There come a time when everything you look at will be in the light of God. 
everything that is there the server who comes to the table is not a server it's a beautiful human being carrying the Creator's light and you smile at the server and you just want to hug that person and say thank you for coming to the table you treat each other differently and you're kind and it's not a weakness it's a strength it's the biggest strength you could ever have as a human being to see God in others you go outside and you see God in the trees and and you know that it's a system, that you're part of it, and it's part of you. You can be overwhelmed with joy and love just to be part of the system. It's so different than you were taught, isn't it? We've saved number five. In numerology, five is change. And it's one of the hardest ones. And it's called patience. <laughs> the human being wants everything now. <laughs> See, I know who's here. It is inbred in you. We've discussed this so many times. It's entrained in you. When authority speaks, you want to have it now. Every single time there is something to accomplish, there is a push to do it quicker than later. Human beings want things delivered to them quickly. And they want action to happen immediately. You're going to have to practice relaxing with synchronicity. The things that many of you are asking for, listen to this, this is important, wake up. The things that many of you are asking for are dependent on other things happening first that you seemingly have no control over but the potentials are there for them to change. If you can wait for it and not be frustrated or angry, that is the task. Years and years ago, when I first started channeling with my partner, we talked about having the ticket to the train and standing on the track you have earned and paid for the ticket. The train is coming. You just don't know when. <laughs> and so your patient person will know the train is coming, be comfortable with it, and have a nice time waiting for it. Instead of complaining that it's late. <laughs> patience. Spiritual patience is gold. It's hard. Every single one of these five things is not intrinsic to any of you. <laughs> you weren't born with any of them. And that is why they're difficult and so accomplishable, dear ones. Don't work on them one at a time except the first one. Make it first. Cognize what you're doing. Understand and believe. And then the rest of them you can work on all at once. Some of you will be better at one than another. That's just because you're unique. Don't compare notes and feel that you're doing it wrong. Did you hear me? There's a tendency to get together and homogenize everything into a list and make it so that if you don't measure up to the list you're not doing it right you can't do that not with these things not with the individual soul that you are having lived so many lifetimes you know what you did the last time you were here it impacts you right now to how good you're going to be at these five things some of you are ready for them some of you are not some of you will have to practice harder than others 
I want you to know that this is totally and completely normal, acceptable before God. You're not going to fail. Don't compare yourself to others. I want you to look straight ahead into the eyes of the Creator and know that you are God and that everything I have told you is true and that everything I've told you is possible is possible. And that's just the beginning. <laughs> that's what I came to tell you today. I'm crying in love with humanity. And so it is.